Hey friends, welcome to today's webinar, Transforming Industry 4.0 with Lola Technology. In this webinar, we are going to explore the methods, the systems to implement Lola Network for Industry 4.0 and through a few of newly short cases that just achieved in our domestic factories, we can find more opportunities over there. So what is Industry 4.0? Well, Industry 4.0 is certainly a complex and fascinating topic, the one we won't be able to fully explain in this webinar. But let's first provide an overview of Industry 4.0 for context before diving into industry IoT architecture specifically. And Industry 4.0 basically refers to the fourth industrial revolution, where we have seen transformative technologies that have changed industry at the moment. So this fourth industrial revolution sees smart factories with connected equipment. But how do we get there? So here we have went through four stages from the first industrial revolution that from the hand to machine, from farms to the first factory, using steam and water power. Then a hundred years later, electricity arrived and the next industrial revolution. So this gives us automation. It gives us assembly lines. So this was the real start of factories as we know them today. And another hundred years later, we have computer arrived. We now have computers that would allow us to automate some of the blue color work in the factories. That's the third um, stage. And this, the latest industrial revolution, which has just started, is called Industry 4.0 and it focuses on the entire network instead of individual component. It's asking for higher automation and higher levels of data exchange. And besides the use of the cyber physical systems and cloud computing, a new concept, the Internet of Things, is bringing great efficiency in manufacturing technologies. So the industrial Internet of Things is often referred as Industry 4.0. Well, let's check the classic industry IoT architecture where you have data to collect and where you have existing machines in the field. And sometimes we saw some applications are totally building a new architecture like creating new machines with new intelligence. But more often, what we saw in this kind of application is retrofit project. People need to upgrade the existing machines and get data from the current implements. So there are many wired or wireless sensors and actuators. They are sensing and actuating everything needed in the physical world to gain the necessary insights for further analysis. Well, Internet gateways and the data acquisition systems, or we call it DAS system, data acquisition systems, for sure, is another important part of this architecture. Some functions of cloud move to the edge, so, and the data acquisition system connect to the sensor network and aggregate output. Well, gateways, works, um, gateways work through Wi-Fi and wired lens and perform further processing. So gateways are able to interact with existing devices using legacy database or existing communication lines. The vital importance of this stage is to process the mountain-like amount of information collected on the previous stage and squeeze it to the utmost size for further analysis. Anyway, in short, stage two makes data both digitalized and aggregated. Now the prepared data is transferred to the IT world. In particular, the edge IT systems perform enhanced analytics and pre-processing here. 
For example, it refers to machine learning and visualization technologies. And the main process on the last stage of IoT architecture happen in data center or cloud. It enables in-depth processing along with a follow-up re revision for feedback. And after meeting all the uh, quality standards and requirements, after meeting all these kind of things, the processed information will be brought back to the physical world. So the fundamental features of IoT architecture include, um, include like the functionality, include uh, scalability, availability, and the mainten maintenance, you know. Without addressing these conditions, the result of IoT architecture is a failure. And of course, the industrial IoT is much more complicated than this basic IoT architecture. For example, the IoT architecture always involves a public cloud access by the operator, while in the industrial IoT ecosystem, mostly of the process is done within the private cloud that are operated by the service provider where the important and the sensitive data is stored. And in the industrial IoT applications, a technology sensor is connected to a programmable logistic controller, PLC, as we always call it, and its output and the data will be processed using cloud-based unique information. It has actual intelligence, which a specific user cannot access. And the communication media and the protocol must match the IoT ecosystem architecture. The industrial IoT ecosystem, which is part of the industrial control systems architecture, provides a wired and wireless link between the sensor and the PLC and ICS server, the industrial control systems server. And you may see the inclusion of ICS-oriented protocols, like the Modbus, the, the Profit Bus, and CAN, this kind of protocol. And finally, when you deal with the industrial IoT ecosystem, the operation safety is a big issue. This ecosystem may be a critical part of the control group, and an incorrect action of the control process might push the system to an unstable and unsafe condition. So selecting sensors, the programmable logistical controllers, the communication protocol, or the communication process are all critical. Now we can better understand how Industrial 4.0 is much more complicated than the basic IoT components in the real world, right? So when factories, when plants, when big enterprises, organizations, before they adopted the industrial IoT technologies, these barriers are still over there. For example, the high cost, high cost of investment when they are not entirely sure about the return of investment and they don't have experience or skills. So they need help from a merger ecosystem, from a merger technology. As organizations deploy industrial IoT devices on legacy equipment and various devices from different vendors, it becomes a big challenge for users to monitor and control the end-to-end -end operation. There's no standardized, um, there's no any standards or processed data between various devices and machines. There's no standard for how to ensure interoperability between equipment was never meant to be smart in the first place. So how to be balanced, how to mix the legacy and industrial IoT infrastructure as its most re retrofitting other than replacing the existing network, right? And moreover, the security first. Organizations must come up with a plan for stream streamlining data monitoring, management, and storage. They should plan for secure long-term storage for data in the cloud or 
in data centers. And another key thing that enterprises need to consider is the connectivity outage. We need constant, uninterrupted connectivity. The challenge is achieving 100% availability is almost impossible. So you need to consider range, number of locations, if it's between multiple factories as well as power consumption issue. Then is there any technology in the market that can help people get out of above troubles, like coming up with high security, easy to deploy, minimize maintenance service, and just with low, very low installation troubles and operation costs, and provides constant connectivity and covers a big area. Then factories, organizations, they can increase efficiency and reduce energy consumption, same as implement advanced IoT for Industry 4.0. I think why not lower one? You know, differentiators and benefits are listed here. The first thing is the flexible deployment options that you have from a public. Or from a private perspective, Lola One is set up in a way where you can deploy low-cost infrastructure for public or private projects. The firmware updates over the air is something that Lola One supports, which is something over competing technologies do not do, and it does have its own geolocation capabilities. Is bi-directional security, which is one twenty-eight AES encryption from the time the data leaves the device all the way till the time is received and decoded on the application platform. One of the greatest part of the technology is actually the battery life. It has long life, literally around ten plus years, and. It does depend on how you configure device, how many times you transmit the uplink, but overall, it gets really great life expectancy. And the thing we like here in China is being able to bring the coverage to areas where cellular coverage is poor or non-existent, especially,、uh, specifically in rural areas or even in the urban areas where the coverage is not reaching. And finally, the deep penetration, Lola One is great to penetrate concrete ground, concrete ground and the steel, and many more other things. And next, we will provide you with a few of performance cases to show you how we were able to integrate and provide coverage and security that customers need for their business. As you will, you will see a number of these benefits and differentiation occurring from today's presentation. You know, someone said, unless you are in China, NBIoT does not really exist. So you can see how popular. NBIoT technology it is in China, but even in that situation, Lola technology still get many opportunities in the industrial 4.0 applications here. For example, in our most popular coal-fired power plants. So today, through this new accomplished example, we are going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges we are seeing in the coal-fired power plant feed this industry. So, let's skip directly、uh, inside from who is our customer and some clients domestic, domestic, national government enterprises in the power plant sector. Oftentimes, when take over the industrial IoT project. For major operation, you can often feel like very daunting task. This could be very hard to find the right place to start. What we always talked our customers is focus on the challenges your business problems are trying to solve all today. So we can make the immediate impact by installing technology to solve the challenges you have. So as you can see on the screen here, there are multiple challenges the sector faces, the power plant faces.
A couple of these are clear enough. I won't read them to you, but you know, needing the monitor access, the monitor access in the remote location, right? All of them, the machines, the pipelines, there are multiple different across from upstream, middle stream to downstream. They all require visualization technologies. And with the recent pandemic, with all we have seen in the harsh environment, is growing even larger. This push traditional, um, the section, the traditional industries, to this I I O T industry. As I already mentioned before, taking on these initiatives, these projects, companies with legacy infrastructure, legacy systems. They can really seem challenging in more ways than just finding the way to start. Like you can see from the first slide to now, taking on how are they implementation challenges can affect to your organization. As equipment to asset that located in harsh,、uh, recognized environment, whether is outside or inside workshop. But always access to data and real time, and most importantly, rising cost of maintenance and labor, and also we we heard from our customers is the increasing human resources investment. This is more than common in industry, in oil and gas factories, supply chains. So you can really see connecting the assets, connecting the infrastructure, store the data, visualizing the data can be very challenging for multiple different departments that involved in these initiatives to take on. And there are many other challenges. Some of them, which we could actually cover, overcome with little one. First is the internet connectivity. Well, in the workshops, you don't get internet physical access. You don't get a sophisticated communication mechanism. Then you end up deploying your own private network, and we did so. And device maintenance. This is quite interesting. Visiting those places has always been a troublesome work. It's dangerous as well, in some times. With lower one ability to consume less power, the battery life that you get helps you sustain for a longer number of years. And coverage, yeah, I mean covering the entire factory is a quite a bit of task. With lower one gateways placed around, you can hope that you can、uh, essentially identify the specific location, and then you can start. Putting up your load one infrastructure over there, and there are four steps here to take on the industrial IoT idea from the project whiteboard to the really reality. So with this instruct, you can see how company can easily leverage the mile-side load one sensors or controllers, simply test that antennas to a load one network. And then start pushing that information through the mile-side gateway, which you can see far ready on the screen, or through any third party's load one gateway. And then you can really start to see how easily to connect a sensor, connect a network, connect back to a platform, right? So that's where we start reading real-time data from remote locations and measurements. And you know there are about thirty new, thirty units of the industrial temperature sensors are deployed across the factory. We we all know a temperature fault happens in a manufacturing production line. It may risk a error and significant cost. So this PT one hundred platinum temperature sensor, as you can see here in the picture. Is fastened on the ceiling or near to the ground, in order to monitoring the stability of the temperature of this、um, assembly line, this conveyor belt line. And also in another smart power plant 
project, customers firstly adopted、um, the ultrasonic sensors around 100 units. The picture you see here is actually a monitoring point at one of these boilers. In the three units, calculate the expansion of the boiler from the x, y, z three axes, and is about twelve floors far away from the ground. Twelve floors far away from the ground, very high way. So it's very troublesome if you need to、uh, manually calculate, right? And it keeps user update about its expansion, the boiler's expansion in real time. And those sensors are communicating with customers' private load one network through gateways on the roof. And I'm very proud to say, very proud to say that we have not had any packet loss or loss of services to date as part of this project. And high accuracy design of the ultrasonic, this ultrasonic distance sensor is one of the reasons that Milesight won the bid, because it measures up to ten meters, offers one millimeter resolution, and plus or minus one percent accuracy. That's very important. The high accuracy and resolution for the expansion measurement of the boiler. And some legacy sensors, like the noise, vibration, water level, accelerating,、um, the speed accelerating, and the temperature sensors, are still working normally in the power plants. The Lola one, the Lola technology-based controllers provides flexibility in deployment option. It can be installed as retrofitted to the existing plant or factory. The challenge of complex installation of the networks, based on historical, the the traditional wired, or short range wireless networks, will no longer be an issue, you know. And those low low one controllers, and the legacy sensors, they are hidden in the junction box, for easier installation, at a higher, pros、uh, at a very higher pros、uh, positions over the ceiling, you know. And thanks to the rich inter interfaces of the controller, the gap between legacy world and the lower one world can be narrowed in an efficient way. I think price is not most important,、um, not the most important point, not key, not the metric、um, for、um, for the customer to to installing these controllers. But the flexibility and efficiency to very quickly to upgrade from the conventional network, from the traditional network to the industrial IoT network, and it's another case from our customer, a logistic park in Shanghai, China. The basic fa、uh, facilities. Of the fire protection systems are already neatly deployed across the entire logistic park, such as the fire suppression, the sprinklers, smoke detectors, water tank, and other fire protection equipment. And the fire protection systems are life-saving infrastructure, rather than a DIY project, right? But currently. Less than fifty percent of fire protection systems across China are being inspected, as they should be. Less than fifty, well, according to our in investigation. And water pressure, water pressure is critical piece of the firefighting system. A building's water supply, whether it's the municipal water works, a well. Or a tank must have enough capacity and pressure to meet the demands of its fire sprinkler system. And in locations where the water pressure isn't high enough to provide for the fire protection needs, or there's no municipal water works,、uh, there's no municipal water works exist, a pump must often boost water pressure. Suppose you have to go physically look at a gorge. Um, and who knows 
if that gauge is even correct. Through a faulty gauge or meter, it's difficult to detect the pipe pressure dropping in that caused by um, that caused by a crack or hidden water leaks. Right? It's very difficult to find out that problem. So our customer, the famous logistic park, they wants to uh, remain the existing infrastructure, remain existing equipment, and introduce the smart technology to read the water level in tank, to know the, the pipe pressure change in pipelines or pumps, and to collect the data from traditional power meter. All of this should be done automatically. So miles side, our pipe pressure sensors and submersible water level sensors are utilized to measure the pipe pressure and water level. The measurement of the pipe pressure sensor is adjustable between 0 to 2.5 um, ampere, or we call it 25 bar. And in some areas, in some buildings, 1.6 ampere or 16 bar is enough to supply water normally in the sprinkler system. And in the rest area, um, in the rest areas, it should be increased to 25 bar after went through the field testing. So in the first phase of this project, 13 pipe sensors are distributed on three buildings to realize the routine monitoring of the pipe and the pump. And in the second phase, another 53, 53 units are distributed across the whole fire protection system in the park. And finally, annually, annually 100 units are expected on the way to other registry parks of this group in China. And instead of sending inspectors on the road, where they can only get to a few job sites a day, a most efficient process would employ the smart devices that these inspectors can monitor from a laptop, a remote center. There would be a lot of efficiencies. And there are many examples of fires that could have caused less damage if the smart Lola One technology had been present. For example, in 2015, a massive blaze, the big fire in a storage warehouse in Kentucky State, US. It caused more than $100 million in damage. And finally, people found that fire pumps at, at the building didn't work properly. Some employees said they saw no water flowing from the sprinklers. If the pressure sensors had been in place earlier, they might have shared these fire pump problems with company officials or even the local fire service before an accident occurred. And for the firefighters, if they know they have been, they have been flowing, 500 gallons of water per minute on the fire for the past 30 minutes. They know it means they should have control of the fire and they can communicate uh, communicate that to the incident command. Mm. So they don't need to put firefighters in harm way by sending them in, right? They know from lab work, testing, that they, they can wait they can go later and then use a fire hose for the fire extinguishment. And uh, another example is a remote monitoring of exist stairways. Um, with the Milesight Smart Workplace Sensor, um, the AI vision sensor, if you have four exist um, in your occupancy, for example, it can give you the exact number of how many people will get away from there. So this technology, being able to let the first responders um, know if somebody is still in need of help inside of this building. So people counting is another um, Lolo one based application in the fire protection system applications. 
So best examples I'd like to share with you guys today. Nowadays, you know, along with the increased connectivity, Luna-based platforms are changing greatly. How organizations maintain the cost-effective productivity, and through our temperature management, predictive maintenance, increased security, and flexibility of easy installation. These infrastructures are changing how companies operate with less interference. In my side, we will continue to work out more solutions based on Lola Tech to help our customers from industry vertical and stay with us and welcome operations. So, thanks very much for your time today, and hope to talk with you guys next time. If you find any information missing in this presentation, you can write us freely. Well, hope you have a nice day. Bye bye.